Okay, well thank you for organizing the session. And um, I'm, today I'm gonna talk to you about some of my dissertation work, which is focused on incorporating sediment transport processes into biogeochemical models. And specifically, um, and I've been working in collaboration um, with my advisors Margie Friedrichs and Courtney Harris. And specifically today I'm gonna talk about the role of resuspension on some of these different processes. And so, w why resuspension? Well, in coastal environments, these are dynamic environments and t processes like tides and waves, um, storms, can resuspend millimeters to centimeters of the seabed. And this can affect the uh, um, rate of sea um, seabed fluxes of dissolved oxygen and nitrogen and carbon, as, which I'm not so much going to talk about today. But what I am going to talk about is how this entrainment of organic matter from the seabed into the water column um, and can affect rates of remineralization, as well as the increased levels of turbidity can affect light attenuation in these um, coastal systems. And then finally, as we've um, been talking a bit about today, once you entrain this material into the water column, it can move laterally around the system. And so using numerical models to complement observational approaches can help us to um, scale, to interpolate and extrapolate our um, results in space and time. However, most previous modeling efforts have focused on either hydrodynamic sediment transport processes or hydrodynamic water column biogeochemical processes. Organic matter in a lot of these regional models is assumed to be instantaneously, often assumed to be instantaneously remineralized when it hits the seabed or permanently buried. And so um, in coastal systems, this isn't um, always such a great assumption. And so in order to link processes like the um, to account for processes like the storage of organic matter um, in the seabed and the subsequent resuspension and redistribution of particulate organic matter around the system, we've um, been coupling a, uh, the sediment transport processes, including resuspension, with water column biogeochemical processes. And by, we're doing this by incorporating a seabed biogeochemical um, module into the ROMS framework. Um, and ROMS is, for anyone who isn't familiar with it, is a well-used hydrodynamic model. We've been applying this modeling approach to a few different systems, um, but today I'm going to focus specifically on the Chesapeake Bay. Um, and in contrast to some of the talks this morning, which focused more on the um, wetlands, I'm at today um, going to be focusing on the main channel, um, although I think this approach could be applied in more coastal systems. So just to give you a flavor of the types of results um, we're looking at with this coupled modeling approach, here you're looking at transects that go from the river, near the Susquehanna River down to the coastal ocean. And so on the left-hand side, you're looking at estimates from the model for total suspended solids, primary production, and remineralization. And then because this is a modeling approach, we compared two different model runs, one with resuspension and one without resuspension, and used that to calculate the uh, to estimate the effect of resuspension on our results. And so here the blue colors indicate an increase. So you can see we're getting this increase near the bed of total suspended solids and the re reinforcement of the estuarine turbidity maximum. This makes sense. Um, uh, but the, um, what, this increase in turbidity is causing an increase in light attenuation, which is causing a decrease in primary productivity in the upper bay causing more nutrients to be shifted downstream, increasing primary productivity there. And then this shift in the production of organic matter, as well as resuspension of organic matter near the seabed, is causing a similar shift um, in the rate remineralization rates. And overall, one thing I want to point out is that, um, that this is um, modeling approaches of allowing us to look at just some of the spatial and temporal variability in these processes, and it might be a way to approach some of the lateral flux um, issues we've been talking about today. Thank you.